Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know what? It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. Don't forget on tomorrow, Friday at 10 o'clock a.m., you can tune in and listen to Is There a Word from the Lord with Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. and Pastor Valerie Wilson of Charity Lighthouse of Faith. Once again, Fridays, 10 o'clock a.m., Is There a Word from the Lord broadcast with Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. and Pastor Valerie Wilson. Also, we are still on track. Yes, we are. We're still on track to release the Keys of Promises. So excited about the Keys of Promises. It is part two of the promises of God, the components of the Old and New Testament. So look out because it's on its way. And we'll let you know when you can begin to order. But we are on track to get this released. After that release... Who knows where we're going to be shifted. We have six projects that we are working on for this year so far. So let me name them off. The Keys of Promises, Sounding the Alarm, a biblical teaching of the mantleship of the prophet. We're also going to release dream interpretations through the scriptures. And we have Tangible Truths, Bible study series. Within this particular series, there are three books Evidence of the Fruit of the Spirit, The Fulfillments of Jesus Christ, and The Oracles of the Holy Spirit. So be sure to tune in and listen out for publication dates in which you can begin to order one of our book releases from Angel Ferguson Ministries. And the balance of life. So excited about that. If you have not taken the time to order your Visions by Design calendar and prayer journal, you can do so now via Amazon. Hardback, $30. Paperback is $22 plus shipping and handling. Within the Visions by Design calendar and prayer journal, you will find a uh, contact page ministry and business plan checklists, monthly calendars, ministry and business building applications, space for you to journal your thoughts, entry space for monthly target agendas, entry space for monthly projected goals, projected resources for your goals, additional note taking, and if you have meetings, and building applications for your ministry or business once again the visions by design calendar and prayer journal is available now via amazon the hardcover thirty dollars and the paperback twenty two dollars all right so i'm sitting here and i am allowing the holy spirit to lead and guide me on what we're going to share with you on today and i'm doing a couple of things and and I hear CEO that's right CEO I am talking to you guess what a CEO is it is not necessarily just for someone who has a business it is a chief executive officer and so I'm going to uh, take that from just being uh, with a business or institution and to let you know that you are the chief executive officer of your life now, are you going to believe the report of the Lord or not? Are you going to believe that you have access to the promises of God and that you can make some great decisions for your life? You have the opportunity to change the trajectory of your life, of the course of your life. And I know that you are saying, well, how is that possible? Well, I'm going to tell you. First of all, there is a invitation given unto everyone who will accept it of salvation. And with that invitation to salvation, 
we have access to the promises of God. Now, I do know that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust, but I want you to have access to the full benefit package. It is time that we make some executive, responsible, managerial decisions for our lives. You have the chance, you have the opportunity, you have the right to shift the way that your life is going. And you have the opportunity to access the fulfillment of God's promises in your life. Now, another word that I heard in my spirit is rebranding. So sometimes in business and ministry and life, we have to rebrand, meaning we have to uh, take a look at where we are. And that's all what we're talking about today. Take a look at where you are. Are you satisfied with where you are? Because you have an opportunity to rebrand. You have an opportunity, I hear another word in my spirit, to relaunch. So I'm writing these words and I'm underlining them. Rebranding, relaunch. You have an opportunity to refocus. Okay? You have the opportunity to produce the fruit of the word that has been spoken over you to you concerning your life you have an opportunity to produce that word produce that fruit so what has been spoken unto you where have you seen yourself what has God allowed you to see yourself doing? What part of his plan do you have? Are you a business owner? Not everybody is a business owner, but you are still the CEO of your life. You still can make executive managerial decisions in your life. You can change the trajectory of your life with applying the Word of God. Living by the Word of God, yes, you can change your circumstances. It is like a business plan. It is like a reconstructing. All right, so I'm going to write that word down. Reconstruction. You know, whenever you go to a depth collection agency that's what they do they want to uh, gather information about your finances about your debt and they want to reconstruct the trajectory that you are on they want to reconstruct they want to redirect let's write that word down they want to redirect where your debt is heading that's a good word redirect where your debt is heading and so you can redirect where your life is heading if you're just tuning in you're tuning in to the balance of life I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us we're talking about CEO a CEO is a chief executive officer, the highest ranking person in a company or other institution, ultimately responsible for making managerial decisions. You are the CEO of your life. You have the power to make decisions about where your life is heading. The greatest connection that we can make is through salvation, through faith, believing that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God has great plans for our lives. It is our job, it is our responsibility to find out what those plans are, 
we can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal unto us the plans that God has for our lives. And he will show us through dream, through a vision, through a prophetic word. He will allow you to see where it is he wants you. Our job is then to find out how to get there. So then when we see ourselves in this place through a dream or vision, you might see yourself operating a business. You might see yourself sitting at the table and you have your published book and you are at a book signing. You see your books in bookstores. Uh, you see yourself conducting classes. You see yourself teaching. You see yourself doing a number of things. You see yourself in ministry. Well, God, how do I get there? What are your plans for my life? So the word of God is fruit. That's right. The word of God is fruit. All right. So let's go over to that. Uh, what tells me that the word of God is a fruit is over in scripture where God is, says that the word at time falls on different grounds and in order for that word to produce that lets me know it's a seed over in Matthews let's take a look at Matthews so excited about the word of God today I'm excited about each and every one of you and I pray that what we're sharing is fruit unto your spirit man so I want to take a look at Matthews and I want to begin let's begin at the first verse 13 and 1 it says the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had not root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And so access for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven comes through your faith, believing that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son. That is your access to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. This is known as the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Your granted access. Verse 11 says, I'm going to read that again. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Verse 12 for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Verse 13, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, 
and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see in your ears for they hear let's go down to the 19th verse when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which is sown in his heart. So the word of God, the word is your seed. What has been spoken to you, directly to you concerning your life from our father which is in heaven is a seed. And when it has been planted, it has to be received. The different instances on the different grounds, such as the wayside, stony places, that is when we reject what God has said concerning our lives. We don't receive it in. I want you to begin to receive in the word of God spoken concerning your life CEO you are delivered you are set free you are the head and not the tail you are blessed and not cursed the fruit of your womb is blessed that means that when the seed of the word is planted in you and you receive that lot that that seed you receive that seed it is meant to produce at an appointed harvest time and a lot of us are carrying the seed of promise but we have not produced I'll say that again a lot of us are carrying the seed of promise but we have not begun to produce we're just holding that seed. I don't know what we're waiting on, but we have not begun to produce the seed, that word that we're carrying. We just walking around carrying a word of promise. He's already shown it to us. He's allowed us to see it. He has allowed individuals to come during different intervals of our lives to remind us of what he has already said you ever received a prophetic word and you're already you already know what they're saying is true but we have failed to produce the seed that we're carrying and so I want to talk to you CEO and let me read that definition again CEO all capital letters a chief executive officer the highest ranking person in a company or other institution ultimately responsible for making managerial decisions and we're demonstrating in the Word of God how you CEO can make managerial decisions it is by your faith I don't know how long and I can talk about me that's the best place to be talk about yourself that a word has been spoken I have been given some things to do but I didn't produce I'm still carrying the promise of what he said now I do have the understanding that I must wait on his timing but some things that I'm supposed to do I'm gonna be transparent here they are past due I don't know how many of you can identify with that but some things that we're supposed to do some things we're supposed to harvest some things we're supposed to reproduce are past due and I believe that God will give us a, another opportunity for rebranding. 
He'll give us an opportunity to relaunch. <laughs> He'll give us an opportunity to refocus. He will give us an opportunity for reconstruction and he will redirect. He will redirect where our life is heading. So I say to you, our listening audience here at the balance of life, CEO, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report of the, the Lord or not? Are you going to believe the things that he said concerning you? Are you going to believe that he has a good and expected end towards you? You know, you can redirect the trajectory of your life. Let me prove it to you in scripture. Let's go over to Joshua. We shared a portion of Joshua on last night during Bible study with Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey. But all night long, let me tell you something, I couldn't rest. This word would not leave me. As I begin to look at Rahab, Joshua, the second chapter and the 10th verse, it says, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above in the earth beneath. Here is where Rahab changed the trajectory of her life. Rahab was a harlot. Today's term, she was a prostitute. She believed by faith, not only her, but the people there, that God had given the land of Jericho to the nation of Israel. And so for all this time, they were looked, looking and expecting the children of Israel to show up, to take possession to what belonged to them. And so I have to say to you that guess what? The word has already been sent out concerning you. When are you going to show up and claim what God has already said belongs to you? The enemy already knows that the victory belongs to you. The enemy already knows that that building, that business, that ministry, that marriage, that family, it already belongs to you. You just got to show up and claim it. But I'm going to share with you in demonstration how Rahab changed the trajectory of her life. Verse 12 tells us, Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that ye shall save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. In other words, when you all come in to take possession because it already belongs to you, save my household alive because of the kindness that I have shown towards you. She changed the trajectory of her life. She was rebranding her life. She was relaunching her life. She was refocusing. There was an opportunity for reconstruction and she was redirecting where her life was headed. You have the same opportunity. The same opportunity. CEO. Yes, I'm talking to you. I know that you're saying, I don't have a business. I don't want to own a business. You are ultimately responsible for making managerial decisions for your life. If you don't like the way your life is heading, you can change course. Yes, you can. If you don't like the way your life is heading, you can change course. You can redirect 
the way your life is heading. If you and I would line up with the plans that God has for our lives, it will redirect where our lives are heading. Mm -hmm. If you're tired of, of going in a circle of pain and chaos, line up with the plans of God for your life. I'm not saying that you won't have pain and chaos, but you will have help. Your outlook will change, your mind will be renewed, and your heart will be changed. You won't seek pain and chaos. Mm -mm. You will seek peace. And when pain and chaos comes your way, you'll handle it in a different manner. If you want to change the direction that your family is going in, you can do something about that. Line up with the will of God for your life and for your family. Begin to pray. Begin to intercede on behalf of your family. And ask God to release unto the Holy Spirit the prayer you should pray. The word of God you should read. Uh, how to redirect your finances. If you are tired of always being in the hole. Ask God to release unto the Holy Spirit to redirect your finances. What are you doing with your finances? always spin 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 sometimes listen going you don't always have to spend do you need it or do you want it and then some things we keep buying and buying and buying and we haven't used what we have so ask him for a plan concerning your finances if your business is not heading in the right direction he can help that with with that also and so here I was sitting at my desk and I, uh, I had the camera on and I looked in the mirror, the camera, and I heard the word, okay, CEO, it's time that we make some ultimate responsible managerial decisions. I'm not talking about any old decision. I'm talking about some responsible decisions. There has been a word, there is a word that has been spoken over your life, that has spoken directly to you. If you have missed that word spoken to you, then begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to bring that word back to your remembrance. What is it that he allowed you to see concerning you? That good and expected end. It is time for rebranding, relaunching, refocusing, reconstruction, and redirection of where your life is headed. By connecting with our Father which is in heaven, following His plans for our life. So let's get to work. It's not too late. It is not too late. We can change the way our lives are headed. But that's if you want the change. That's if you believe what he has spoken concerning you. And so if you notice, it is all depends on you, the individual, not somebody else. So take your life out of somebody else's decision making. Why is somebody else making the decisions concerning your life? Because when we leave this world, individually, we have to stand before our Father which is in heaven. So why are you leaving the decisions of your life into the hands of somebody else? Oh, you decide for me. You have a mind. You have a well made up mind. Unless uh, someone is in the individual, um, in the circumstance that they have to have someone making decisions for them. But if you have a stable mind, if you are in your right mind, you can make decisions for your life by lining up with the will of God. God, what are your plans for me? How do I get to where you showed me? 
if I am on a collision course and going down, how do I redirect that? How do I change that? Oh yes, he has a perfect plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. If I'm heading the wrong way, you tell me, Father God, so that I can redirect and head the right way. You know, I love you without measure, simply because I believe in the potential of you. Have a great weekend.